Hey guys, welcome to Great Learning. In today's world where we are surrounded if not overwhelmed by a large amount of data, databases are seen as the most important part of information technology. Now there are many types of management systems for these databases and most of them have their own pros and cons. These are the systems that govern how we store and work with data in the world today, right? So it becomes equally important for beginners, intermediate learners and even researchers to understand these key differences. And since it can get confusing especially for beginners, I will make sure to clarify each and every difference so that you have a complete understanding of the same. Keeping exactly this in mind, we here at Great Learning have come up with this short yet super informative video discussing the differences between DBMS and RDBMS. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Before we get started, I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains, absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and I'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments. All right, guys, the first thing that we really have to talk about in the world of DBMS and RDBMS is to take a quick introduction to understand what they are for the people who are not familiar with these concepts, right? Now, a database management system, or as it's called in short, DBMS is basically a system where you can organize your data and work on your database in a structured fashion, right? So uh, considering this, the major thing that uh, always comes into mind is how the data is stored. That is where the heart of the difference lies between DBMS DBMS and an RDBMS, right? For example, even how the data is stored is a huge difference. Take a look at the DBMS side of things where it says data is stored in a hierarchical order while a relational database management system or an RDBMS as it's called is again another type of database management system which will give you the features of a DBMS alongside having to work with data in a different way because here each of the data points, right, be it columns or be it tables in a database, these tables have entities uh, or specifiers, right? They uh, they are called as keys and I'm sure you might have heard of it. Primary key, secondary key and what all, right? To quickly give you an example of where DBMS is used, think about how Windows stores files, right? That is a very good example of DBMS, even XML files and more on those notes. Now, if you're talking about an RDBMS, think about all these Oracle servers, think about MySQL and think about the other flavors of SQL that are, that are in existence, right? Because SQL stands for structured query language and it is a very popular offering to be used when you're working with a relational database management system, right? Fantastic. Coming to the differences between a database management system and a relational database management system, here are some of the most important points that you guys really have to know about, right? The first point, since we're talking about databases, we really have to talk about data storage. As I uh, already told you, the way the files are stored in these databases are super different, right? In a DBMS, a traditional D DBMS actually stores its data in the form of files for an application uh, to be used. Each individual file will be stored and used, right? Sometimes it can be stored as JSON files. Uh, other times it can be stored as other files like XML or anything else as well. Coming to the RDBMS side of things, here the data is not stored in the form of individual files, but it is stored in the form of a table. Now you might have seen databases with multiple tables in it. And if you have realized that these tables have a connection in a way where they can be linked with each other to add more functionality or to add convenience, right? Again, the use of primary key, secondary key, and all of that is just because that we can have this kind of a leeway where we can link two tables or two data elements together and use them uh, to perform any operations we require, right? That that is an important point. 
All right, coming to the next difference, we really have to talk about normalization. Now, normalization lies deep in the heart of the entire concept of databases as we know it, right? Because here, with respect to DBMS and RDBMS, there is a huge difference. A database management system does not offer any sort of support for normalization, be it 1NF, uh, 2NF, or boy score normal form. All of these is not supported in a traditional database management system. But if you're looking at a rational database management system, yes, you do get the flexibility of working with normal forms, right? So normalization is basically an operation of how you would efficiently want to group uh, and bring the data together in a way where it is not only uh, more readable, but it, but it is also efficient to be stored, right? There's multiple form, multiple normal forms that are out there, be it 1NF, that stands for first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, boy squad normal form, all of these things, right? So if you're working on a DBMS, understand that it does not offer any sort of support for normalization, while a relational database does offer, right? A huge huge difference. Now, the third difference that we're going to talk about is with respect to data integrity. Data integrity is very important. And again, here, the RDBMS has a slight edge over it because uh, with the DBMS, you really don't get anything native to the database management system where it talks about data security properties or where it talks about, uh, uh, you know, providing any sort of methodologies, any structure and policies that your data will have to follow if it uh, is stored or worked with on the database, right? You don't have any of those features. Here. Of course, with multiple different flavors of DBMS, you can tweak around with having another uh, software, another tool to maintain it. Of course, data security is still very good with DBMS, but then there is another add-on which does the part for it, right? It does not come native. Talking about an RDBMS, this is again the exact opposite of a DBMS where you do get a certain uh, properties. I'm sure you might have heard about it. They're called as asset properties, and this is used to define the entire aspect of data integrity, right? All right, guys. So for the people who do not know what ACID stands for, ACID stands for A as in atomicity, C as in consistency, I as in isolation, and of course, D as in durability of data, right? You see that these four properties each has its own uh, niche application. Each is a property which will govern an aspect of the data, right? This advantage you do get uh, with an RDBMS that you do not with a traditional database management system, right? And then of course, coming to point number four, we were talking about application itself, where should you use a DBMS and where does an RDBMS work fine? Well, a DBMS, a traditional DBMS can work very well if your application is depending on one single user and maybe it is a part of a solution uh, through a small organization setup that you might have, right? Uh, what I mean by that is you might not have the capability to handle large amounts of data effectively or have access wherein multiple users can work on the files simultaneously, right? So this complexity is in fact avoided rather than me saying that it is not supported, right? Uh, so uh, in, in the world of how we use Use data and store it. We usually prefer an RDBMS if we have a requirement which says, hey, you need more than one user to work on the data. And of course, the data set is really complex. So you are going to require a different management system, right? A different way of how you would store the data. So as soon as it becomes multi-user and it's a part of a big organization or a large data set, I really think you guys should look towards RDBMS there, right? And then coming to the last point in our comparison, this is a very important point because here we're talking about distributed databases, right? Now, distributed computing is something that is really taking off and that can favor a lot here because if you're talking about a traditional DBMS, it doesn't really give you the chance of having your data stored in multiple databases in chunks and you having access to it, working with it and, you know, thinking about everything else such as debugging, storage, addition, removing, uh, backing it up, all of these things, right? Right? These things become a point of concern where you'll have to spend some time to see how you will work around all of these limitations. But with an RDBMS, these systems do provide complete support for distributed databases. So in the domain of big data, or in fact, in your own uh, small amount of data can be stored in multiple databases, you can actually have a way of connecting these databases and having access to your data, right? Think about it like a master copy where you're uh, trying to access the data from all of these databases, right? That's an analog which will tell you how RDBMSs are slightly uh, advantageous to DBMS in this point. All right, now that we've seen all these
these five differences, let us quickly wrap up this comparison, right? First of all, we took a look at what these systems are, how they basically differ from each other, uh, how are the different ways where the files are stored, where are they supposed to be used, how do they work, uh, do they even talk about data security, can we work on these files in real time? So we discuss all of these things, right? Uh, I'm sure that there is a lot more complexity in terms of how you would compare DBMS with respect to RDBMS, but that is completely based on your application, right? So you will have an application in mind, you will know the data that goes for that application. So you're going to use it and eventually assess to see which either a traditional DBMS or an RDBMS would fit for its usage. But since now that you know all these points which can be used, uh, I'm pretty sure it'll help you make that judgment call and it'll help you with that process and make it a lot easier, right? Okay, fantastic guys. On that note, we have come to the end of this particular comparison between a DBMS and an RDBMS. If you have any more points that you think are valuable to mention here, make sure you guys head to the comment section and let me know there, right? We can have a conversation there and we can definitely talk about more insights on this. Okay, fantastic. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Anirudh Rao and I'll see you on the next one. I want to introduce you to Great Learning Academy. This is a free initiative by Great Learning where you can have access to over 200 plus courses with 1000 plus hours of free content on all of the trending high demand domains absolutely free. Register now to complete the course and get your free certificate of completion as well. Check out the link in the description box of the video below for more details. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. This is done to make sure you do not miss out on any of the new updates or video releases from Great Learning. And of course, guys, if you enjoy this video, show us some love and do like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing, right? So make sure you share this video with your friends, colleague and everyone who can make use of it. And at the end of it, make sure to comment on the video if you have any queries or any suggestions and I'll be more than happy to respond to all of your comments.